Good morning, everybody. I am Omni Rusted. Welcome to Oxygen Not Included Quick and Dirty Tutorials. Today, we're going to be talking about power transformers and exactly how power works. So, there's several different types of power that you can get. You can get the wire, heavy watt wire, heavy watt joint plates, conductive wire, conductive wire bridges, heavy conductive wire bridges, heavy watt conductive, blah, 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 and the power transformers, which is the most important thing. So, most of the time, you're going to be stuck with the heavy watt wire. It can handle, oh, I'm actually a little bit over here. It can handle up to a max wattage of 20 kilowatts before it starts to get overloaded. I'm actually going to have to replace these, and I didn't realize I was creating so much power. Uh, the current load on this particular circuit is 24 out of uh, 24.69, but we're only producing 3.46 kilowatts right now, personally, just, just on this one specific. You want to really split up all of your, uh, your, your power generators and what they're doing and where they're going. You don't want it all on one central circuit unless you're really, really confident and you use a heck of a lot of heavy wall conductive wire. But again, that uses, you know, that uses refined metal. You don't really want to do that. So, to show exactly how these work, heavy watt wire can go and power anything. It can be plugged into anything and it will power it. Uh, for example, right down here, I've got it coming into my refineries through heavy watt joint plates and it will power the refineries because refineries take 1200 and I just don't want to make a heck of a lot of power transformers. Heavy watt joint plates are what get it into separate rooms. They count as a building block much like tile does and they will allow your power to transfer through because heavy watt wire and of course your heavy watt conductive wire does not travel through tile whereas your wire or conductive wire do so that's how that works that allows power to transfer through tiles and still makes it so it counts as a closed room and you want to have that for closed rooms for example, in my space buildup, I've got rooms where I have oxygen pumping into it, and I have heavy watt joint plates to prevent it from being vacuumed out. The other thing that you do is you put heavy watt wire, which heavy watt wire, by the way, sinfully ugly, absolutely terrifyingly ugly. Uh, let's see here. Heavy watt wire in this particular cell alone, negative 125 for only five pieces of it. That's negative. I don't even want. I'm not gonna do the math. Never mind. I'm not gonna do the math. And heavy watt joint plates are also ugly, but they're less. They're less ugly than if I just stretched a whole bunch of heavy watt wire through this whole place. So you could have heavy watt wire going everywhere in your base. You don't wanna. So what you have is you have transformers and transformers come in two different flavors they come in either the large power transformer or the power transformer the power transformer alone do i have one around here yep right here power transformer alone is for your normal wire because the normal wire can handle up to a safe wattage of a thousand watts traveling through it before it starts to get overloaded I've got 1.2 here, which is potential power consumed, because these both won't be drawing power at the same time, so I feel safe in running that through. You can do that for a multitude of things, as long as you're sure it's safe. If you're not sure it's safe, keep it under the maximum kilowatts or maximum wattage that will be going through this. So, your regular power transformers are for regular wire. You can run whatever wire you want through this, but it's just uh, what they're meant for. Uh, it can handle a sa maximum safe wattage of 1,000. It holds also 1,000 watts in it as if it was a battery. Of course, batteries hold a heck of a lot more, but in this case, it's just, you know, 1,000 there. It'll hold that, and it'll send it through to the wire itself without getting it overloaded. The large power transformers, which are these gorgeous, lovely things that take refined metal to make, are a little bit stronger in the fact that they can hold up to 4,000, and they can handle a maximum safe wattage of 2 kilowatts. You can go again a little bit above that if it's not drawing if if it's not drawing all at the same time. In this case, I've only taken 960 watts, but it has a maximum safe wattage of two kilowatts, which is the which is double of the regular power transformer. That is meant for your refined wire, which is of course your conductive wire, which takes uh, refined metals. I've been using a lot of lead because lead, of course, can handle the temperature. What you need to pay attention to here: these produce a lot of heat. 
Maybe not in this area. I've got this area very cooled. I didn't realize I had this area very cooled. But they put out, let's see, the power transformer puts out 1,000 DTUs per second. The large power transformer puts out the same. If you're not cooling them, they will heat things up pretty quickly. Now, another thing to pay attention to on the transformers themselves are these arrows. You hook up your incoming power, much like you would with uh, water or gas or whatever, your incoming power towards your main power, your power generators into the upper section, which would be this right here. Your coming out wire is the bottom one. This also works, for example, I've got steam turbines up here. The steam turbines come in through a conductive wire, the power generated by these, because I didn't want to have, I, I didn't want to have this broken up uh, by heavy watt joint plates, because then we might be transferring heat through the heavy watt joint plates. So this comes in, takes the power from both of these, of course, through conductive wire, because it has a max wattage, again, of, tw of uh, 2000 watts, goes down here and comes in through this large power transformer, and all the power from that will go out into the area. This will power up the large power transformer here. You can see it says 92 joules coming in through there or how much it's holding, but it changes a little bit depending on how much of a draw it is putting in to my heavy watt wire there. And that's how you can work with your power generators if you don't want them uh, to be transferring heat through heavy watt joint plates or you don't want them hooked up to heavy watt joint plates. For example, up here, uh, a little bit of a freeze there. I've got petroleum generators and I've got natural gas generators. They're both hooked up through heavy watt joint plates because I don't worry about the heat escaping through these areas. These are gassed up. These produce their own gas. I'm not exactly worried about heavy watt joint plates conducting uh, temperature up here. In my space area, I am worried about the heavy watt joint plates conducting any temperature through here. So I've either got splits, which allow vacuum because temperature cannot go through a vacuum, or I've got them made of steel where they can uh, safely, pa they can safely, you know, not overheat and not melt down, but also not heat up things around them very much. This is a melting point of 2400. Thermal conductivity of 54 in steel, but that's okay because I have, of course, everything up here with a cooling loop. So that is how power works. I hope it was a good explanation for you. Uh, it's... No matter, basically, no matter what, you're going to get a heck of a lot of uh, spaghetti. Try not to worry about it too much. Just, you know, you can reorganize it and you can reorganize it as much as you want. You're going to get spaghetti no matter what you want. Also, another thing I probably want to mention is the difference between smart batteries, like I showed you in the last one, where you can set when they send a green signal or when they send a red signal to the power generators that are they, they are attached to through automation wires. Smart batteries, they're great. They can hold a lot of power. This one is holding 17 kilojoules. You don't want to only use smart batteries. That would cost you a heck of a lot because they only cost refined metal. Plus, if they're not hooked up to an automation wire, you're just wasting a heck of a lot of refined metal. You can set up things like this, which is a battery bank, which will take excess because uh, jumbo batteries can actually hold a lot more power than your smart batteries. Uh, the only problem is, is both batteries put out, of course, DTUs. You want to make sure that you are cooling them. But uh, they will basically, whenever your generators turn on, they'll be powering all of your batteries at the same time. Will only shut off specifically for the smart batteries. Uh, in the case where you have multiple power generators, you of course want that automation wire from one smart battery traveling and connected to all of your power generators to shut them all off so that you don't use up uh, like excess fuel in the case of your petroleum generators, excess natural gas in the case of your natural gas generators, or excess coal in the case of your coal generators. Mind you, don't rely on coal a lot. I've got this one set to 10%. It will only start at the lowest threshold. It will make sure we always have a little bit of power for my coal generators. I've got them set up on automation. You know, if we actually had any coal at the moment, I've got my hatch farm producing coal, but you will run out of coal like I have right now. These are your last resort. You do not want to be using a lot of coal generators. They produce a heck of a lot of heat. They produce, they, they take up a heck of a lot of, uh, of coal, they, 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 they put out a heck of a lot of carbon dioxide. So use coal generators as your last resort, or in say this case, use them to take out natural gas. This one, for example, is a coal generator that barely ever turns on. It only powers up one smart battery. Of course, the smart battery will turn it off when it gets to 5% of power. 
but it's only powering one gas pump, which is just powering my natural gas generator, which, my, uh, which is of course just powering the air pump for the natural gas, which sends it on to my natural gas generators to keep us full. So that is also covered batteries, smart batteries, and your generators. I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I've been Omni Rusted. You've been awesome. Y'all have a great day.